The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learned, and he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, among the priests, we have a saying that um, for those who are preaching on the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, we call that the preacher's nightmare. So great the Trinity, so present in us, how do you explain something like that? Anyway, today, being, the, being Trinity Sunday, the invitation of God's Word is somehow to attach ourselves to the theology of the Trinity. Its principle and pastoral presence in our lives. We heard it say the Trinity is a mystery. We don't solve mysteries. They are not meant to be solved. They are meant to be shared. Mysteries are meant to be shared. While we cannot understand mysteries, we allow the mystery to enlighten us. Whenever I celebrate Trinity Sunday, I recall fondly Father Andrew Vole. Father Andrew Vole was a French missionary MEP priest. He was teaching in the seminary many years ago. I was with him as a young priest in the Church of the Assumption in Pataling Jaya. And it was there that he became my mentor. He has since passed away, he died at a very old age. Now, because he was ordained prior to Vatican Council II, he has this story to tell, tell us, you know. So I remember this story. He says, at his final year in the seminary, the students had to sit for the defining exam before the ordination. And he will call it the last judgment, you know. If you pass, you become a priest. If not, then uh, something else. Huh? Okay. So it happened that he failed this exam. And his exam was on the Holy Trinity. So they told him, okay, you can recede. The professors huh, who examined him told him you can recede. But on that day when he was to recede this exam, his archbishop happened to be there. And so they invited the archbishop to be present for the examination. And so the professor mentioned this. He said, your grace, your seminarian does not understand the theology and the teachings of the Holy Trinity. So the Archbishop looked at Vol and he said, okay, we'll examine him again. And so he asked Vol, how many persons are there in the Trinity? 
So he says, three persons. Okay. Then he asks Paul again, how many gods are there in the Trinity? One God. Okay. Then the bishop, the archbishop, looked at the three professors there and he said, do you know anything more than he has said? No. And he's, he was ordained and became a very, very influential priest. You know, very good man. So, brothers and sisters, when we celebrate this feast of the Holy Trinity, it is not a time for us to engage or hunger for a new argument about the Trinity. It's a time for us to experience or to hunger the God who is love. The God who is love. All of us, all of us, we are trying to name our God. We name our God with an experience of the God that we grew up with. Now, in ancient cultures, like the Egyptians, like the Greek mythology, we find that they, yes, they named their gods, these powerful gods, but these gods were there and they had to appease these gods by offering sacrifices to these gods. But our faith reminds us that our God, who is Father, who is Son, who is Holy Spirit, is a God of infinite love who sacrificed for us that we may be saved. And that's the difference. That's the difference that we bring and that we share with others. In ancient religions, we find, don't mean any disrespect to any religion, we find mythologies. And in a, in a Hindu mythology, we will, there is, there is a saying that at one time there was 360 million people living on earth and they had 360 million gods. Each person is a reflection of a god. Now whether the mythology is right or is wrong is intriguing. It's very intriguing because it speaks a lot about the presence of God. For us today, we look at the person of Jesus and we say, yeah, I can identify with the presence of Jesus in my life. And so the call of the Trinity today, firstly, is about the teaching and the experiencing of unity, of unity. That's one. The second is an invitation for us to share this unity with others. But we can only share this unity with others when we know what God we are worshipping. Which God we are worshipping and what we are naming our God. The name changes, you know. When we were a child, the God seemed, our God seemed to be like a judge, like a policeman, condemning us to hell, keep waiting to catch us. Then we grow up, we mature in our faith. Our God figure or image seems to change. For those who come from a loving family, God is all love. But for those who had bad childhood, those who were ill-treated, those who were, who were brought up badly, for them, God is someone who has forgotten them. Forgotten them. God is bad for them. So for us today as we come here, who is my God? We change the names of God. If I win the lottery today, 
my God will be a different God. My God will be money. So, who is my God? Brothers and sisters, let us remember the mystery of the Trinity invites us not to engage in arguments about the meaning of the Trinity, but for us to engage in sharing a God who cares, a God who cares and a God who loves us. So today, as I end the preacher's nightmare, I ask you, in the simplest way, we share with one another the God who loves us and the God that we love. Okay? All right?